Hello everyone. Welcome back. Today we are going to discuss VPC role and how to avoid loop in VPC environment, how STP works with VPC and peer switch feature. Let's recall. I would like to request you please pause the video and revise VPC terminologies. Let me start with VPC domain. VPC domain includes peer keep alive link, peer link and member port as well as VPC domain is used to define global parameter for VPC. Peer keep alive link. Keep alive link is a layer three link which is used to monitor the status of VPC peer, whether remote peer is alive or not. And this will be done by exchanging keep alive messages on UDP port three to double zero. Now peer link. Peer link is a layer two trunk link which is used to synchronize control plane information between VPC peer using CFS protocol, Cisco Fabric Services protocol and this will be enabled as soon as we uh, enable VPC. Okay, VPC member port. Member links are the interface which taking part in a port channel or we can say belongs to VPC. VPC peer, a pair of Nexus switches which is participating in VPC domain will be known as VPC peer. Orphan port, single home device or dual home device but not participating in VPC will be known as orphan port. Please keep in mind that orphan port has to be part of VPC VLAN. If orphan port is not part of VPC VLAN then that particular port will not be considered as an orphan port. VPC VLAN. A VLAN which is passed over peer link will be known as VPC VLAN. Let's say I have passed VLAN 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 on peer link. In that case, those five VLAN will be known as VPC VLAN and other, will, other VLAN will be known as known VPC VLAN. So if it is part of VLAN 10, it will be known as orphan port. If it is not part, uh, let's say it is part of VLAN 11. In that case, it will not be considered as an orphan port as 11 is not our VPC VLAN. Okay, and VPC. The combined port channel between VPC peer and downstream devices will be known as VPC. Let's discuss how to form a VPC domain. As we discuss in uh, VPC part one, we have to define VPC domain, then we will define keep alive link, then we will configure peer link, and then we will configure VPC for downstream devices. Okay, to understand that same, here we have enabled feature VPC and LSCP, we have configured VPC domain, we have defined VPC keep alive, and then we have configured peer link and uh, downstream a VIP configuration for VPC for downstream devices. Same way we are going to configure on switch two. Please keep in mind VPC domain identifier has to be same on both the devices on switch one as well as on switch two as this identifier will be used to assign VPC system MAC address and this VPC system MAC address will represent a logical switch to downstream devices i mean to say to switch 3 in this topology on switch 3 we are going to configure a normal port channel as we used to do in traditional environment okay question time what will happen when we configure vpc peer link under a port channel as soon as we configure vpc peer link command under a port channel that particular port channel will become VPC peer link as well as it will change MTU to jumbo and it will change spanning tree port type to network and this depends where you have configured VPC peer links. Okay, now time to discuss VPC role. As we know that there are two defined VPC role. One is primary, one is secondary. And duties for primary is VPC primary switch is responsible 
to process STP BPDUs and ARP. Apart from processing STP BPDUs or ARP, it is it it will play very important role when there is a failure in VPC network. I mean to say, let's say peer link went down. In that case, what kind of action will be taken? It depends uh, whether uh, your switch is primary or secondary. Okay. How we elect VPC primary and secondary? Basically, it, uh, VPC primary or secondary will be elected based on role priority. If there is a tie on role priority, uh, VPC primary and secondary will be elected based on lowest system MAC address. Okay. Along with VPC role, we have operational role as well. Uh, primary and operational primary and operational secondary. Okay. In general, VPC role and VPC operational role will be same, but can be different from VPC role. I mean to say VPC primary can be operational secondary or op VPC secondary can be operational primary. How? Okay. So to understand how, let's have a look on this particular slide. Let's assume I have configured VPC and switch one have lower priority. So switch one will be elected as a primary, switch two will be elected as a secondary. Initially, VPC role and operational role will be same. I mean to say switch one will be primary as well as operational primary. Switch two will be secondary as well as operational secondary. Now, as like, these roles operational role will be driven from real and uh, real time events i mean to say let's say switch one went down and came back or we reloaded the switch what will happen switch two will take the operational primary role and once switch one comes back it will be elected as a operational secondary so uh, does it make sense okay Time to discuss loop avoidance in VPC. Before we starting with VPC, I would like to discuss something about STP as well. In traditional layer two domain, to avoid the loop, we were having STP protocol, which runs in control plane, correct? STP avoid loop by blocking redundant link, correct? What in case, STP process fails loop, right? So uh, now let's come back to VPC in VPC environment loop avoidance will be performed in data plane and the old logics for that will be implemented directly in hardware, not in control plane. It will be implemented in data plane. Loop avoidance rule is also known as VPC check. VPC check says VPC will not allow traffic that was received over a peer link to be sent out of any VPC member port. I mean to say, if traffic is coming on peer link here, okay, it VPC will not allow to send it out to any VPC member port. However, it can be sent it out to other port like layer three port or orphan port. Same you can see here, right? So we are sending out of this orphan port, but we are not sending out of any member port. So again, I am repeating, VPC will not allow traffic that was received on peer link to be sent out of any VPC member port. To understand the same, let me go through the packet walk, okay? So let's assume I'm originating the traffic from system A to system B, okay? So as soon as switch three receive the traffic, what it will do, it will learn the MAC address and will perform local hash to choose the path either towards switch one or switch to. Let's say in this example, it chosen the path towards switch one. Now switch one is going to send the traffic towards switch two and 
towards switch four. Now, what VPC check or uh, VPC loop avoidance mechanism says, if switch two is receiving a traffic on peer link, will not be allowed to send the same traffic over VPC member port. This one and this one. This is how we are avoiding duplication of packet or load. Okay. We have VPC ex exception as well, and we will understand the same using this particular diagram, where again we are originating the traffic from system A. As I said, switch three will learn the MAC address based on source MAC address, then will perform local hash and will choose the path either towards switch one or switch two. Here it is choosing uh, towards switch one. Now switch one is going to send the traffic towards switch two. Now VPC check will come in picture. What VPC check says, if I am receiving a uh, traffic on peer link, I am not allowed to send it out of any VPC member port. But here we are not sending, but on this one we are sending it. Why? Because VPC check will be disabled if remote VPC member port is down. Here for this particular VPC remote peer member port is down therefore we are sending the packet so this is the only case when vpc check will be disabled okay to understand better let me uh, go through this particular diagram here switch one is receiving traffic on member port and sending it sending it out of member port same way switch two is receiving traffic on member port sending it out of uh, member port in this particular topology, switch one is receiving the traffic on peer link. Now VPC check will come in picture and will say you are not allowed to send it out of any member port. Why? Because remote peer is up. Okay. If this is down, you will be allowed to send the traffic over the member port. Here we received traffic on member peer link, but we are sending it out of member port. Why? Because remote VPC member port is down. This is how uh, we avoid loop in VPC domain. Okay. Now time to discuss STP. I am assuming that we know RSTP and synchronization process in RSTP. As we know that each VPC peer have their own control plane, which means we have separate stp process on each peer but in vpc stp will be controlled by primary switch or uh, to be very specific uh, operational primary i mean to say only operational primary switch will send uh, bpdus stp bpdus to vpc member port okay here the uh, like thing is secondary switch will not process BPDUs. In case secondary is receiving BPDUs, it will just relay towards primary switch. To make understand, let me uh, go through this topology where we have primary switch, secondary switch. Who is going to originate STP BPDUs? Primary, right. Okay. And STP process will be run on both the switches. Okay. Another thing is, Key, uh, like peer link will be always in forwarding state. Okay, as I said, only as uh, VPC primary switch will originate the BPDUs. In case secondary receive BPDU, it will just relay STB BPDUs towards primary. Okay, this is how spanning tree interact with VPC domain. Here you may have question: Why do we need a spanning tree? As we have loop avoidance mechanism in VPC domain as well. So STP will run always in backend and will help in case VPC is misbehaving or VPC initially whenever VPC is coming up or like uh, no, let's say VPC is not uh, working at all. In that case, loop will be avoided by STP. Okay. Now time to discuss VPC peer switch feature. Before going to uh, VPC peer switch feature, let's discuss the spanning tree behavior on whenever there is a failure. Let's assume 
uh, v, uh, switch one is VPC primary, switch two is VPC secondary. Okay, let's assume primary switch went down. What will happen? Secondary will become operational primary as well as from STP point of view, it will become STP root. There is no port state changes on these port, correct? In, it means there will be no traffic disruption. Again, it depends how like on control plane, whether your control plane is healthy or not. In case your control plane is overutilized, in that case, it may trigger STP reconversions and uh, we, we may see disruption as well. So uh, to overcome from this, we either we can increase the re, uh, convergence time in, uh, in STP or we can use PS switch. But you may say, okay, there is no problem traffic on my control plane is healthy and we are, uh, we are not facing any kind of issue when primary goes down. Then why do we need PS switch? Okay. To understand that, let's assume switch one came back. What will happen? Switch one will take the role of operational secondary. From STP point of view, he like switch one was our STP root, correct? So it will become STP root, which will trigger, like there will be the port changes on switch two, which will trigger the synchronization process. And as a temporary, uh, temporary, uh, solution what it will do is known edge port will be in blocking state which will trigger us three to six ping drop in our environment so we were looking for a solution to avoid this extra synchronization process to overcome from this extra synchronization process cisco introduced a feature called peer switch okay which allows us both VPC primary and secondary to originate the same BPDUs. And in that way, we will not encounter uh, like uh, extra synchronization process and there will be no disruption in traffic forwarding. And both switches will send the STP BPDUs, which we already mentioned. Here we have to keep, uh, we have to make sure STP priority is same on both primary and secondary. If priority is not same, PS switch, even we have configured PS switch, but it will not be operational. Okay. So here we can see like both primary and secondary is sending BPDUs after enabling PS switch. To make it more understandable, we have a topology where we don't have PS switch enabled, the other one where we have enabled PS switch. So in uh, without PS switch, what will happen? Only VPC primary switch will originate the BPDUs for VPC member ports. But for orphan port, like these switches, switch one is working as an independent process, switch two is working as an independent process. So for VPC ports, only primary will send the BPDUs but for orphan port, each individually will send the BPDUs. With peer switch, what will happen? Both switches will originate same BPDUs and will send it out to the, the member port. Okay. Here, the thing what is happening is it will like we will not go in extra synchronization process and we can avoid short disruption whenever uh, something recovers. I mean to say primary recovers. Hope this was useful. Thank you for your time. Have a nice day.